So today, we're picking up where we left off on the Miata. I still have the bumpers, the hood, the trunk, and the roof to do. So that's what we're gonna get started with. As you can see right here, I got the bumper, front bumpers over there, trunk, hood, everything's good to go. And then we're gonna start laying out the design for the roof. Hopefully I know what I'm doing. And now, you're watching the channel that is to YouTube what Richard Simmons was to short shorts. Welcome to Bodie Vision. Hey, so what is up and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on another Miata video. I really appreciate you tuning in, checking out, subscribing, doing all that stuff. You know, I really appreciate that. So I've got the hood hanging up, the trunk hanging up. I like to hang them up so that way I can get the front side and also get the back side, same bang, one hit, got it all, get that all done. And uh, also, before you guys start typing away with your little comments, these, I wanted to take them off but they're glued on, they're nice and strong. You know why? Because it's a race car, boy. So what I did as soon as I got here, because I knew I wanted to kind of start messing with the design, I primed the roof and then I got it outside. So it's just sitting right here, drying in the sun. The bumpers needed a little more prep work, but the roof is right here, like I said, drying. So that way, by the time I'm done painting everything else, I can kind of come back to the roof, lay out my design, and see how that works. So we're moving right along. It's time to mix up my primer. Well, I already got it mixed right here. What I like to use is the same primer that I always use. It's a four to one high build primer. I like to use a high build primer or a filler primer because it gets in there, fills any sanding scratches or any imperfections. The primer gets right in there nice and thick and then I can sand that nice and smooth before I lay down my base coat and that's what I found to work best for me. So what can I say, the primer came out pretty solid. You gotta understand when you're using a filler primer like this, it's gonna be thick, it's gonna be kinda nasty, but that's why we sand the primer when we're done with it, to get rid of all of those imperfections before we lay down that base coat. So, like I was saying a minute ago with that top, this primer, this was soaking out in the sun, I just scuffed it real quick with a 600 grit sandpaper just so that way we can kind of replicate the conditions that it's gonna be when it's the final thing. So. It's not perfect, but like I said, this is just kind of a mock-up. So the idea is we're gonna stretch this lace and this material over the roof, and then I'm gonna paint that black, and then all of the negative space is gonna be black, and then all of the flowers and floral and all those nice designs are gonna be whatever color is underneath. It's obviously not gonna be primer in the end, but like I said, this is just a test panel to see if I know what I'm doing. So now I have all the corners pulled tight. When it comes to the final hood and the final rendering of everything that I'm doing, it's gonna be a lot better. Again, this is just for mock-up. So everywhere that you see primer is gonna become black or whatever color I have laying around. I don't wanna waste any of his black paint because I only have so much of it and I got a bunch of other stuff laying around. So all the negative space is gonna become a color and then everything underneath right now, the primer is gonna be the nice floral design.
so I just ended up using some blue paint because that's what I had laying around and like I said I don't want to be wasting product that I need that was just laying around so it worked out really nice so as you can tell I don't know if the camera's picking it up but this side I did a lot lighter this side I did a lot darker that way I can kind of see for the final spray out how I want to be to make the design as best as possible and also usually when I'm spraying my base coat I like to spray it around 28 to 30 psi this I knocked it all the way down to 10 psi my thoughts behind lowering the pressure is I don't want to get air and paint up underneath the pattern because I want it to be a nice clean and crisp design so I thought if I lowered the pressure that'll just land right on top of it and it should be good to go but the real test to see how it came out is by pulling off this lace hopefully it looks good so when this is all said and done I'm just gonna sand this down completely hundred percent to where it's primer and then I'm gonna do my black base coat and do all the flake and all the other stuff this is just gonna be sanded right off so I don't have to worry about any of that Man, I don't know about you guys, but I think that looks pretty good. And for the final spray, it's going to be completely different. There's going to be flake in the mix. There's going to be black, shadows, blending, shading. This is so drastic because it just goes from the primer to the blue. The final one is going to be a lot more subtle, and I think it's going to look a lot better. The main idea behind doing this was to just, again, get an idea of if I can even spread out the lace. I think it looks really good. So now that it's been a little while, it's nice and dry. It's ready to go. I'm just going to get this sanded right off so that way I can start to do my black base coat and everything else I'm going to to sand what I'm going to sand it with is this 600 grit sandpaper right on the DA that'll knock all the high spots down and any dry spray that's on there and get it nice and smooth to lay the base coat right on top of it And just like that, now everything is sanded down. I like to finish with a 600 grit on my primer before I lay down my base coat. That's just what I do. I know some people do a little less, some people do a little more, but 600 tends to work for me. So this is sanded, that sanded, it's all sanded down. So the rundown that I gotta do is I gotta do base coat over everything, front and back, hood and trunk, and then the bumpers, base coat, black, top, base coat and then as soon as the top is done with base coat the top is done for right now then i'm going to go ahead and do everything else with one coat of flake and clear mixture mixing it at the same exact mix that i mixed it last time that's why i measured everything out that's why we keep track so that way it's going to turn out the exact same way and then i'm going to do two more coats of clear coat on top of that and those two coats are going to be just clear coat that way i don't have any flakes rising to the top making it real rough and textured that's what i do 2K high solids clear with no flake in it at all on top of my flake layer.
Ah, so everything looks good to go. Roof right there, obviously, because I'm not gonna be clearing that because, not right now anyways, because I'm gonna be doing a whole lot of other stuff. But everything else turned out really nicely. I mean, check it out. And that reflection looks nice and crisp. I don't know. Some people say it's in the products and what you're using in the guns and they get all caught up in the temperature and all this stuff like that. I think getting a finish like this, this clear and this crisp, that just kind of comes with practice and I mean figuring out if I go a little closer, does it look a little better? If I go a little slower, does it run? Does it look too orange peely? So that's just about tuning and that'll come with time to get your paint to look like this. Now there's still a little orange peel in the mix because, well, that's what I always get. And if you notice on factory cars, there's also a little bit of minor orange peel, nothing too crazy. And also it's extremely hard to get a nice, clean, crisp finish when you're painting over flake because the flake is almost like sand in a way. So you're painting over rough flake and then to try to get a smooth finish over that is kind of hard, but for what it is, for what Taylor wants, for what the car was, I think it's perfectly fine. So now I gotta get my design figured out and for me to do that, I'm gonna I want to put the roof right here on top of the car that way I can measure it and make sure everything is good to go nice and symmetrical and I'm gonna be happy with the final panel layout So this first green line that I'm laying down, well, let me back up real quick. What I'm laying down is this green line and what I'm laying it out of is some pinstriping tape or detail tape. I don't know exactly what it's called, but the name of the product is 3M233 Plus. Super thin, super nice. I found this to be the best type of tape to work with. I've worked with a vinyl in the past. I don't like vinyl as much because it stretches. This is real nice and you can get those nice tight 90 degrees works real well so that's what I use so this green line right here the way that I laid it down is I put this blue tape here and this blue tape was just kind of a guide for me so that way I can make sure the tape was put down real nice and real consistent so this outer green line is going to be the very very far edge of the panel that I'm doing up top there's going to be nothing past this edge and I'm still going to do another green line to the inside of this green line after I do the whole thing up top and flake. So this is a pretty long process but this is the first step. Now what I got to do is mask off everything else and lay down my base for the panel which is going to be real heavy silver flake with a little bit of gold flake in the mix and that silver flake is going to complement the engine bay real nicely. So now I got it masked off a little more tightly. See as you can see the green and then the corners are real nice and I don't know if you can see this heavy difference kind of right here. The reason why you can see that is because I did two coats of base coat on everything else but then I figured it wasn't worth doing two coats of base up top because the black base is going to be so much underneath the flake that it's just going to be buried but I still wanted the base to be black because that's the effect that I'm going for. So the next thing to do would be to get the hard top over there so that way I can start spraying it out. Now I would do that today but I cannot because the hood and the trunk is still hanging up in the other room and they're not dry enough for me to move them so I'm just going to have to wait on it. So this is going to be a good time to end this video off and I'll just pick up where we left off in the next video. So man, we're coming to the end of this Miata. I mean, I don't got really much left to do. The roof is going to be real cool. You'll see the whole process when we get there. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video, comment, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. You know it is YouTube. I'm out.